martial arts video. Today we're going to talk about how to throw a perfect punch. Well, in a real street fight situation, your stand is crucial. My only advice is that if you ever find yourself in such a situation where you have to fight, well, if you have a chance to escape, run away, please do so because it's not worth it, you know, you never know what your opponent can come up with. And so this video doesn't want to promote violence, instead wants to help you out to find a way to learn how to throw a perfect punch and also how to defend yourselves. Most martial artists learn a fight stand and that's very important, but in a real fight situation I don't think that many of them would use what they've learned. Only those who practice daily like 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. For example, one of my good friends, he practiced uh, Kung Fu, Shaolin Kung Fu, and he used to train like 10 hours a day. 10 hours a day, it takes the doctor away. I mean, it takes the enemy away. Seriously speaking, like, if you train for many hours, you're gonna be effective. Remember that people on the streets, especially people who are used to fighting, I mean, they've got an advantage. They know how to throw patches, and even though they don't have this, the perfect technique, they'll be more effective than you'll be, in a way. So, my final stand is this one, I tend to um, lean forward a little bit, and so I tend to uh, keep my right arm forward, the left arm here, like close to the ear, and um, let's pretend this is a lighter now. Some people say that it's a good idea to put it inside your hands, and to hold it tightly and in this way your knuckles will stick out and the very fact that your knuckles will stick out this will enable you to hit your opponent in a harder way of course in a real fighting situation this will be very hard to do as would you have time to pick up um, a lighter? I don't think so when the situation arises it's hard to find such tools although it's very important to look around because sometimes you can use anything even a bottle of glass can be very very harmful. I reckon it is logical to aim to win but in a real fight situation nobody wants to lose. Well it is important to consider our skeleton system, our muscle system. Not all of us are built in the same way. It is very important to consider that your opponent might be bigger, fatter, stronger than you are. Strength is not necessarily counted in muscle uh, volume or if you're very well built. Strength is something that you either have or not have but indeed yes you can develop strength and how do you develop strength by working hard every day. So let's pretend I am uh, throwing a punch at my opponent now and my opponent happens to be somebody very very big, somebody that's got like bigger muscles than I have and in a stronger skeletal system. If I hit him hard, it's not necessarily gonna be a big deal for him as the guy has to be hit in the right way, but specifically in the right point. And in a real fight situation, this is gonna be very hard because you have no time to think which point is the right point. So you either have trained before or basically you're screwed. Some people believe, and this is a common belief among bodybuilders, they think that just because they're very well built up and very, very strong, they've got big muscles, they think they're invincible, but that's not the case. When it comes to muscles, if you're very well built, it's a good thing because this will protect you from the blows of your, of your opponent. But I wouldn't rely on muscles alone. So, being well built is a good thing, being a bodybuilder can be a good thing, this could prevent you from getting hurt from certain blows, from certain patches. But at the same time, if you've got two muscles, if you're too big, this won't enable you to move very well. The less movement you have, the less effective you'll be. So if you're too big, this won't enable you to hit your opponent in a fast way. If you're too big, this will prevent you from hitting your opponent fast. So, in a real fight situation, the faster wins. Well, uh, there are some pros and cons about the fact of being big or small. Usually, thinner people, slimmer people, appear to be very fast and they can run faster and they can, you know, they can 
escape, and that's a good thing. Fat people, they don't have the same opportunity, but yet, the very fact that they've got a lot of fat in their body, this enables them to have a lot of strength, and if they hit you with a punch, that's gonna be very, very bad for you. So, they might be fat, big, and even slow, but if they hit you, that's gonna be a big deal. So as I said before, it is very important to hit your opponent in the right way, but at the right point. So even a bodybuilder, even the biggest bodybuilder in the world, if you hit him at, at the right point, he will be down, he will be knocked out in no time. When you throw a punch, don't close your fingers into a fist before you actually hit your opponent. This will slow you down a lot. So the, the proper technique will be to just go for a punch, so with open, open fingers, and then to clench your hand just right before you hit your opponent. This will give you a faster result, a better result, and, and your punches will be definitely more effective. So your hand has to stay loose right before you hit your opponent, and, and then at the very last second you close your fingers into a fist. Breathing is a very important and vital part when fighting. If you hit your opponent, and let's, let's, suppose, let's suppose your opponent is hitting you as you are hitting him at the same time. This is a very real thing. This could happen in any real fighting situation. Let's pretend you're like breathing in, so taking air inside your body, and in the very same moment as you do that, you receive a punch. Yes, you hit your opponent, but at the very same time, you got hit by your opponent. So if you, if you don't know how to breathe properly, this is going to knock you out in no time. Well, there are some common mistakes when it comes to fighting. Some people tend to cock their hand back, and so they, they're very predictable because they're telling you, hey, I'm going to punch you, you know, but this is not the case. The punch should start in the very same position. Some people tend to stay in this position and then when the enemy and when the opponent is coming forward they hit him like right away without like saying hey I'll give a phone call I'm, I'm gonna hit you in the face you know no one wants that that's very predictable that's very ineffective so in a real fight situation please don't ever do that it's very important to say that if you throw a punch with your fingers clenched this is going to slow you down a lot so this is not effective at all. So very likely if you hit your opponent with the right technique, and if you're lucky enough, you're gonna be successful. So throwing a punch is not an easy task. Well, another mistake that people tend to do in every martial arts is the fact that they are not used to punching real things. Are you familiar with hitting real things? I, think, I reckon that boxing is a good, good source of study and learning of course because boxers are used to hitting real people all the time although when they're wearing boxing gloves there's another aspect the punching of your opponent is kind of different you're protected you're padded that doesn't apply necessarily in a real fighting situation also I'd like to talk about a false myth yes there is a false myth some people say that if you hit your opponent right in the nose and if you're like giving him a, an, a, an upper punch some people say that it is possible to move the nasal cavity into the brain and kill the person well this is not the case this is very rare this is something that won't happen simply because first of all you need to break the nose in the first place and then after you break the nose you should be able to hit your adversary in a certain point and to hit him in a certain way that this would enable the uh, actual bone to hit the brain. So I think the best technique when it comes to punching would be like to punch in a certain way as fencers do. And if you are left handed of course you should use the opposite leg instead. So when you fight, when you punch somebody you need to be very fluid. The more fluid you are, the better it is. This, if you're very tense, this will slow you down a lot. Punching with an incorrect technique will break your hands. 
it is very likely that you will break your fingers if you don't know how to punch properly. So how should you practice your punches? Well, first of all, you need to get used to hitting real things. When you hit something, you need to hit it properly. You need to get used to hitting the, the adversary. If you don't do this, I mean, when you hit somebody, you're gonna go to the doctor right away. And we don't want this to happen, so you need to be prepared. In order to be prepared, you need to train. You can train in several different ways. For example, shadow boxing will enable you to develop speed. And it is very easy to practice. You just uh, put a light, um, you project the light against the wall, and you see yourself projecting it, like you see your shadow, and you fight against your shadow, and you start like punching your shadow. And this will enable you to develop a lot of speed, and speed will be vital when you fight, because when your opponent will go against you, for example, with open hands, this is something like people tend to do here in Sicily, you will need to be faster than your opponent and if you hit your opponent before he hits you you're gonna win so in a real fight situation this is gonna be a plus also another good good advice would be to do like boxing with a weight so holding a weight and boxing this is something the boxers actually do when they train and this try to like to to hold some weights in your hands like one kilos for example Not the weights you need to use must be very light as if they're too heavy this will be bad for you and won't be a good source of exercise but to be effective let's pretend we have two weights one kilo here and you practice some patches with weights like holding weights at the same time and then take the weights off you you'll see that your speed has increased dramatically so if you want to improve your speed work on your shadow boxing and your weight boxing as well and this is gonna be very good if you have a punching bag that's a good exercise because this will train you on how to actually properly hit something because if you tend to hit something this way this is gonna lever it's gonna be like it's gonna break your wrist I don't know if that will be the, the case but um, when you hit your opponent you need to hit him in the right way so if you hit him like this this is gonna be good but if you hit him like this this is gonna break your wrist and this happens to many boxers who, when they fight outside the ring so my suggestion would be like to start with a punching bag um, I wouldn't suggest you to use uh, like uh, boxing gloves when you when you do that because I mean you can use it but not all the time because if you want to be if you want to rely on your hands if you like to rely on your hands make sure that you're using your hands not gloves gloves are a protection for your hands and in a real fight situation you won't have that opportunity another important suggestion and this is very stupid but yet important to know because some people might not know this it's important that you know how to close your hand you need to close your hand this way and then you need to put your thumb inside don't let your thumb stick out because if you do that you're gonna break your thumb. A good idea will be to start moving from a certain type of material to another. For example, you could start like training yourself by punching a punching bag and then moving to, for example, like you could take a rope, you could encircle a, a tree with a rope and you could hit the rope. That would be a good, good way of training. And then even hitting a wall itself could be a good way of training because this will enable you to actually understand how to punch properly so here is my friend Chicho is helping me out in this video and I thank him for this and he's a musician like me and today it's just we're gonna have fun with this video so he's gonna help me out okay so in Sicily people tend to fight a lot like this like this or like this or like this so he's gonna attack me this way and we should I'm gonna show you how we should react to this attack Okay, right? Ah, ready? Quindi tu mi, mi prendi, cioè se lo fai mi prendi. If you do it, you get me, but I get you too. Quindi, so we can see that I could hit him like right in his throat. That could be very harmful, that could be very dangerous, that could be very effective for me to, def to defend myself from him. 
yes, he would slap me in the face, but in the same time, I would just hit him right away. So that's something important to learn. E buona sta cosa. Quindi, anche se fai tipo così, fammi tipo così. Boom. Anche se tipo mi prendi piano. Boom. Quindi io entro subito. Di nuovo. So Kung Fu teaches you to exit the punch and do it, doing this by being very relaxed. So if you do this, you're gonna exit the punch and then you're gonna hit your adversary. So talking about, this is my fighting stand. This is my fighting stand, this is how I fight. What would you do, like in a real fight situation, what would you do? Che this, fare? I do this. Okay. So this is like, we, we have both the same kind of stand. This is my stand. So let me show you something. Okay. Mettiti un poco poco più indietro. Okay, this is what I mean. So, when punching I think about fencing a lot, so so if I'm here, I need to, when I punch, I need to keep my hands open, so I do, so, okay, okay. so, you start with an open hand and then you close it afterwards. Ah, esatto, sì, 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 capito come vedete tu. Ok. Vabbè. Uh, so if if I am like left handed and, and also if I tend to use my left arm, so left punch, I would use a left stand instead. That's my personal view of it. So talking about a karate punch. First of all, in karate there are some positions that we tend to use. So people tend to stay with an open hip so and then when they punch they tend to close the hip so and they say that there is a lot of strength and power to this so this is like I'm gonna punch with this punch so like this. I'm not gonna punch hard I'm just gonna show you the movement of my hips. So I'm like this. I think this is this could be somewhat effective, but not totally effective because in a real fighting situation you don't think about your hips. For me, as for me, it is very normal to use your hands in the upper part of your, like against your opponent's upper part because naturally speaking your hands are on top so it is easier and then your legs in the down part. So let's pretend this is a sword and I'm hitting my opponent this way, right? Same thing I do with a punch. So I'm here, I'm like, so you need to go to against your opponent, you need to like use your feet as a spring, like in fencing. The more you practice this, the more will be effective in, your, in a real fighting situation. Well guys, the best punch, the most perfect punch is the punch that you never throw. It's the punch that you never give, so if you have a, a chance, please don't fight, just run away. But if you must protect your family, your wife, your girlfriend, you must fight. And then if that is the case, you must be prepared for that. And uh, let's hope uh, this will never happen, but if it happens, you must be prepared. Well guys, thank you so much, thank you Chicho, thank you so much for watching and remember, if you feel sad, you, you better, better call Sal. Bye bye. Well, she's time, Josh. Ready?